morning, everybody. Yeah, it was so hard to get out of bed this morning. So comfortable and so cozy. It's cold out here, and my shoes are still wet from yesterday. And uh, oh, it's the last morning of the trip. You got to get up, right? You got to get up. I really lucked out with the clouds. They're just rich and beautiful here to the south. And that's the only direction everywhere else is completely clear, 100% clear. So they're just over the mountains now. They're, th they're changing really quickly this morning. They're sweeping this way. Yeah, so I'm hoping that they will stick around in this corner up here. They might uh, empty out, which would be too bad. But uh, Let's see, sun rises. Actually, it's right about now. Um, so the sun should be coming up and hitting on these clouds, giving them some color within about the next 10, 20 minutes. And um, yeah, I'm excited for that because once that happens, then I can go back to sleep. So the last forecast I saw, which was a few days ago, said that the thunderstorms were supposed to last two days and then it was going to be clear today, Friday. Uh, so that's why I planned my exit for today, thinking that it would be uninteresting weather for photography. Well, of course, look at the sky. Uh, <laughs> if I had known it was going to be like this, I would have stuck around a few more days. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any more food, so I have to leave. Also, I have some businessy crap I need to attend to. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame. And, uh, you know, uh, them's the breaks, I guess. And while it is always a little sad to leave these places, these amazing areas, I am greatly looking forward to the gigantic pizza I'm going to consume when I get back to town. Well, the miles are just dropping away this morning. Already back here at Golden Lake. And the route that this old codger told me about is up this notch right here. And uh, it looks really loose and really tallisy and really scree and sketchy. But it's basically the same as going up the side of the, of the lake where I came down here. So I don't think it's any difference. Plus the pass there is only like 10-5 versus going all the way back up to Mono Pass, it's over 12. So uh, this way will save 500 feet elevation gain and hopefully uh, about three miles of travel, as long as I don't kill myself in the process. Anyway, I'm gonna change my socks and pop a few ibuprofen and hit it. Well, here's something a little creepy. From this angle, the notch has completely disappeared. I mean, where is it? I think it's right there. But man, you can't see it at all from right here. <laughs> Hoping that it reappears when we get over there. Aha! Uh -huh. The notch! Uh, she reappears! Quite a climb to get up this far so far. But the fun is yet beginning. Looks like a good crash three, crash four scramble to the top. Who knows what's on the other side. Let's get over there and check it out. So near the top. It gets definitely class four from here. Doesn't look too hard, but it'll be interesting to do with a 40 pound pack. Oh, let's hope my forearm muscles are up to the task. Oh, look at that, my saws. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Made it to the top. Let me show you what I just came up. Pretty cool, pretty fun. Not as hard as I thought. That's still tiring. Now the question is, how do I get down? It's pretty steep. But anyway, there's the, the road out there and the Rock Creek Resort. So all I gotta do is just basically bomb down this hill and, uh, and I'll catch up with the road and I'll be back at the trailhead in, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour or something. So, yeah, pizza is imminent. This has been a really steep descent. I thought I got cliffed out back up there, but nope, found it all the way through down to the lower talus fields where it broadens out and then easy hop skip and a jump down to the road. Well I'm back on hikeable ground now after coming down this talus uh, cliff here and I found this little use trail obviously the western uh, eastern approach but from down here man it doesn't look obvious at all I mean that's the pass from the other side it's a very clearly defined notch but from here it just looks like a little dip like why on earth would you ever decide hey I bet I can find a route that goes up there. Pretty wild. And that enough people have done it to create this little use trail. Although I'm thankful to them because now I have an easy way out. Well, after an hour and change descent, 
I'm back in the land of the living horses. What's up, horses? One of the problems with going cross country is it's never as short as it looks on the map because you gotta detour and zigzag and backtrack and retrace your steps when you find a wrong way. So that old coot who told me about that trail said, Oh well, yeah, back in the day when I was a fit youngster, I could go from the Pioneer Basin to the pack, the pack station at Rock Creek in an hour and 45 minutes. And i tell you what, unless that guy is Superman or an ultra marathoner back in the day, I think he was spinning me a story. Because it took me three and a half hours, twice as long. I only stopped a few times. <laughs> anyway, it was really fun. Now I'm back on the road. I got to hoof it about a mile or so back up to the uh, trailhead. That's what it's called. I was hoping to hitchhike. I figured that a Friday in the Little Lakes Valley would be so busy with cars, but I haven't passed a sing been passed a single time yet. So it's going to be an ignominious end to this trek, walking a mile on asphalt. But uh, that's okay. Woohoo! Made it back. Almost exactly four hours from Valley Floor to GP Door. Tell you what, that pizza is gonna taste so friggin' good. I can already imagine. Oh boy. Somebody's eyes is gonna pop out of their head. Somebody's legs is gonna start kicking and thrashing. Somebody's spleen is gonna be pulsing. <laughs>